What's going on guys? It's Red Bull Tanker and welcome back to Axis and Allies 1951 Global 40 ed G40 edition turn 7. It has been this has probably been the most interesting turn so far in the game. So let's get to it. All right, starting off the Soviet Union. All right, the Soviets had 98 IPC to spend. They bought one diplomacy dice. And they diplomacied for Brazil, and they were able to get it, despite Sato attempting a block. They went, they went for tech again, and uh, now Mr. Kalashnikov himself is now also on his way to Siberia, because he is failing in delivering his famed assault weapon to the Soviet armed forces. Let's see, the Soviets also bought, um, they bought two minor factories, three tanks. They paid off the uh, damaged miner in southern Italy. Uh, they paid off the damaged naval base that was in, uh, over in Amur. While buying three infantry, three mech, and one Katusha self-propelled artillery. Combat. This is where the game got very interesting. So mustering up its last remaining armored strength, the Soviets launched another assault on Paris. And it was, once again, a massive blood fight, um, to say the least. Uh, after, what was it? After a couple rounds, no, no, after two rounds, uh, the last bastion of NATO forces retreated out of Paris and initially joined the Allied forces that had landed in Normandy. Uh, total casualties from Paris were 10 infantry, uh, the U.S. 101st Airborne Division that was there, two artillery, uh, six tanks, a fighter, a tactical, a jet air, a jet fighter, and a air transport. And then, oh no, no, the entire Paris force was destroyed. My my apologies. Uh, these guys came out of. Um, I'll I'll cover that later. So the entire Paris force was destroyed. The Soviets, but the Soviets did lose four infantry and six tanks. Next, the Soviets launched an airborne assault into Norway against a British infantry and fighter. Um, they did end up winning, though it went like... I couldn't believe the misses. It went like four rounds. But in the end, um, the infantry and fighter were destroyed, but the Russians did lose three airborne units. And for a hot, for a very, very hot minute, if only they could have held it, at the end of their combat, they had achieved, they had achieved their goal of nine victory cities. But as we go forward, you will see that that is no longer the case. All right, so then uh, non-combats. Um, they had moved forces into West Germany to back up the defenses there. Um... They, um, well, that was pretty much it. They backed up forces there. They continued down here, though they did shift their fighter from Iraq up to Romania. Um, nothing. Um, they did retreat their sub from the Pacific off the West Coast back up to Alaska. And, yeah. So then at the end of the turn, the Soviets got a major boost in money. They, init they collected uh, 96 IPC. They took 22 from the NATO bank after securing Paris. And then they got... They had gotten 8 for bonuses plus a one-time 10 IPC bonus for capturing Paris. So they ended up getting an extra 21 on bonuses as well. So at the end of the turn, the Soviets collected 139 IPC. NATO. 
NATO didn't do any, well, NATO really didn't do much this turn. Like I said, the only thing that they did do was they pulled their forces, uh, they pulled their forces out of Holland, Belgium and put them in Normandy. And then they did shift some forces in Africa to help aid the British um, down there in uh, Transjordan, Israel. China. China had 56 to spend. They did try um, they did try to diplomatically influence Mongolia, though it did not uh, it did not work. They did repair the Shanghai fa um, then they paid off to repair the Shanghai factory and then bought two destroyers and four mech infantry mechanized infantry and saved one IPC. They did not conduct any combat this turn, just tried to shuffle around more units on the non-combat, trying to get the area down here secured. Oh, and that was something the Russians did. They took their forces from Burma, dropped them there, just trying to get trying to get the trying to get China more beefed up. Uh, but it's it's not looking good. Uh, at the end of the turn, China collected 40 IPC. Uh, Plus 13 for um, uh, plus 13 for bonuses, and then wait, what's that? And then they got a plus one, but I can't remember what the plus one was for. Then they got uh, no, the plus one, wait. I'm sorry, I can't remember why they got a plus one. I'll have to go back through some things. So then initially they got 54, then they rolled for war bonds, which they rolled a three, so they collected 57 IPC at the end of their turn. Britain, all right, this is where things got in, this is where things continued to get interesting. Okay, so Britain had 25 IPC, or 25 IPC to spend, they bought Two airborne units, two tanks, and a self-propelled gun. Combat. The British mustered all their forces under the Army of the Rhine from Holland, Belgium, and the Canadian Army that was in um, Normandy, and they attacked Paris. Uh, the battle went one round. The Bel uh, They killed uh, two Soviet AAA and seven tanks, while the Soviets were able to kill two airborne and six infantry. Uh, the Russians did elect to retreat back into West, retreat their army back into West Germany. Um, on the retreat, they lost a tank and a fighter. Uh, not really much for non-combats for the Brits, um, other than no, they didn't really do any non-combats. At least here in Europe, they didn't do any non-combats, and then once again, forgot about. Uh, moving these guys out of the Pacific, or at least move, trying to get them moved somewhere in the Pacific. And then at the end of the turn, Britain collected 25 IPC. All right, Sato. Sato had 29 IPC to spend. They bought three airborne, and then two tanks and a an, uh, self-propelled gun. Uh, combat. And this is where things again. So the Australian airborne units. Uh, land uh, conducted an airborne attack on Kwangxi. It was undefended, so the airborne was able to walk right in. And then the um, the Australian army launched a amphibious assault to retake Hong Kong. As you can see, it was successful uh, in the fight. the uh, The Chinese lost uh, two infantry, while the Australians lost one infantry, and then this. Artillery here in Kiangxi retreated from uh, Hong Kong and was able to make it. Um, not much for non-combats outside of just these two air transports coming back to Manila. And then um, they deployed the three airborne in the Philippines and then put the two tanks and the uh, self-propelled gun here in Borneo. So then at the end of the turn, Sato collected 30 IPC. 
plus the five that they get for bonuses. All right, over to the United States where there was some uh, comedy of errors in judgment and not paying attention to the board, but all right. So the U.S. had 79 IPC to spend. They bought a naval base, uh, three tanks, three transports, two infantry, and a self-propelled gun. Combat. All right, this was another big one. So, the mechanized forces of the U.S. First Army, along with the newly arrived armor and self-propelled guns from Normandy, launched an attack into West Germany against the German, or against the German, the group of, the group Soviet occupation forces of Germany. The battle went one round. The Allies inflicted on the Russians the casualties of one AAA three infantry, and three tanks. While the Allies did suffer casualties, they lost the two regiments of the... two infantry of the 4th Infantry Division. They lost an artillery and three self-propelled guns. After that, the German forces retreated into southern Germany, and they lost a tank along the way. In other news, the U.S. 3rd Army which was initially backed only by the 89th Infantry Division, um, went in and liberated southern France. There was no Soviet... Uh, there was no Soviets there, so there was no um, fighting. And then, in reprisal for the attack on their ground forces in Holland, Belgium, the U.S. B-47 delivered an atomic bomb on Berlin. Uh, it, had, it did survive the AAA fire... And it did drop, and the damage roll was six. So it killed all the Soviet forces that were inside Berlin, which were three tanks and an air transport. And then as far as the uh, facilities go, there were two facilities. So on a so on a one or so from a one on a one, two or three, the factory would have been max damaged. And then on a three on a four, five, six, the airfield was uh, the air base was damaged. So the air base suffered uh, critical damage from the U.S. nuke. And then over in the Pacific, using their large with the use of the heavy transport technology, the U.S. moved the vast majority of the Eighth Army. Oops, moved the vast majority of the Eighth Army. Up into Korea, and launched their invasion of Korea. Korea was Korea was lightly defended by an infantry and an artillery, and the U.S. suffered no casualties. Uh, Non-combats. So this is where I realized there were some comedy of errors. So initially, so these two destroyers stayed here and but forgot about moving them up to kill that Soviet sub. So that did hurt the U.S. Or no, actually, I think he missed on his um, convoy rolls. So there was, there was that. We moved all the aircraft back to their respective areas in Japan. And then over here in the in Europe. So the initial ground force is here of two infantry, two tanks, and two self-propelled guns. We brought them down here and landed them in southern France. And how could they do that? you and how might they be able to do that you ask well in this game uh sea movements work a little differently um how we kind of have it set up is that um navy ships have a combat move and a non-combat so they can only move uh naval ships can only move two spaces on combat but can move three spaces on non-combat so um, that is how we currently run naval movements. I'm not sure if that's something that, um, I will keep, um, and it's up to, um, once we put this rule set out, it's up to any, it's up to everyone to, uh, play how they want to play. They can either play with the standard access and allies rules or kind of play with our modified rules, but I'm not, I'm not sure how much I feel about the, uh, the naval movement rules. Uh, but I also sometimes question uh, the naval movements in uh, Global 1940 as well. Um, but so, yep, 
So the U.S. Third Army got reinforced in southern France. And then um, we moved these two jets over from the western United or the eastern United States. Uh, another comedy of error. I completely overlooked taking Brazil this turn. And so on the non-combat move, I moved my invasion force for Brazil down in order to uh, make preparations for the... Well, they probably actually, they probably wouldn't have been able to reach because on a combat move... One, oh, yeah, so they wouldn't have been able to reach Brazil anyways on the combat move anyway. So either way, the forces here are set. Uh, the 3rd Infantry Division and the 1st Armored Division are set to make their landing against Brazil next turn. And the B-47 could not r reach back to um, London because just like the naval bases, like naval bases don't give you the plus one. Air bases also don't give you plus one. So uh, the B-47 had could go seven, and I think it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he couldn't have reached England, so he just, the B-47 just parked itself off in Holland, Belgium. All right, and then at the, let's see here, deployment. So the U.S. basically they put, they put the naval base and a tank in Egypt. Uh, one thing though, even though the naval base does not provide the plus one, you do need a naval base in order to to also build ships. So you need a combination of the factory and a naval base in order to purchase ships, or at least to put them in, uh, drop them in the adjacent sea zones. So that does kind of uh, that um, that helps with um, um, uh, making at least the naval base still worth needing to buy if you want to buy if you if you take territory and you put a factory down but you still want to build ships you do have to build a naval base as well in order to do that and then they drop the majority of their reinforcements over here in the west again two infantry two tanks a self-propelled gun and two transports so yeah and then at the end of the turn the u.s collected uh 66 ipc and then they have and then they got 17 for bonuses and um like i said the soviet sub off of alaska missed its convoy rules so there was no negative uh, no negatives to the u.s economy so the u.s end up collecting 83 IPC all right then down here to the victory cities like I said if only the Soviets could have held on to Paris they would have won they would have won the game but unfortunately the roles during the Paris battle uh, NATO the the um, the initial attack on Paris NATO got good roles and really weakened the Soviets and then the um, yeah, they weakened the Soviets very to the point where it was going to be easy for the Brits to come in and retake Paris. And uh, like just kind of looking at it at the end of turn seven, it is kind of looking like turn turn six was probably the high point for both communist nations in this game. It kind of looks like now it'll just be the Looks like the game is probably going to move into its slow grind as the two sides are um, are ground down and the West comes out victorious. But we'll at least give it another at least give it another two turns and we'll see how it goes. So that is it for turn seven, and we will see you guys next time for turn eight. So until then, guys, as always, take care.